Here we've got the new variation on the heat exchanger. The previous one was like this. It was uh, taking the air in and you know, expelling it this way and taking you know the air from here and expelling it that way. This one is the cross flying. It takes the air here and expels it here and takes the air from here and expels it to the middle. You know, the advantage of it is you, you have this single unit, stick it in a window, you know, one fan blows in, another fan blows out, and you have uh, a heat exchanger. And so this, these are especially helpful in Scotland where the buildings have to breathe or they just get super mouldy, yeah. but it's also super cold outside, so yeah. you just end up freezing. But yeah. this means you can blow all the moisture out while keeping the heat in. Yeah. Essentially, uh, even when it is uh, completely wet outside, even if it is, you know, uh, raining, you know, but the temperature differential is about, you know, 10-15 degrees, uh, when the air goes through this uh, heat exchanger and gets preheated uh, by you know the same sort of you know, factor of about 10, 15 degrees, uh, the relative humidity of that air falls uh, to below 40 percent. You know, and then that 40 percent humid air goes around, collects the uh, humidity from all the surfaces and such, goes up to about 50, 54 percent, and you know is expelled out. Yeah, so especially, like, good for bar bedrooms and stuff, but also bathrooms and kitchens, especially, where you've yeah. got most of the vapour being produced. Yeah. So this is going to be the block of uh, heat exchangers. They're going to sit in uh, one of our windows, and we have a similar window downstairs. That slide open, like this. So the block is going to go like that. And the window is going to close on it. And then some plywood or uh, insulation I board. Think it's plastic, actually. Um, uh, I want to put the clear plastic on the bottom so we are actually not attracting any view. Uh, in the uh, system downstairs, we introduced uh, a bit of smartness into it so it actually has an uh, extensive uh, network of sensors. We measure for CO2, we measure for humidity, we measure for people presence, and so all that. And we you know, track and uh, uh, throttle these uh, heat exchanges in accordance to the load that we experience. But uh, at the same time, it is also possible to do it, you know, just stupidly and just, you know, switch it on when you need it and switch it off when you don't. And what are the specs on it? Well, uh, we should have about 85% efficiency, thermal efficiency. And uh, the consumption is about two and a half watts for both of these fans. So, so you know, a single unit should return uh, in the current weather, you know, 20 degrees inside, zero degrees outside, should return roughly 600 watts of heat while consuming only two and a half watts of electricity, which <laughs> I think is quite impressive. You know. And how much does the unit cost to print and the fans? Uh, the fans cost. The fans are quite expensive. They are about uh, fifteen pounds for the pair. The printing cost. Uh, um, I'll round it to about a spool, you know, so about another twenty pounds in the materials, you know, and quite a lot of the development. I thought it was half a half a kilo. Per There's a half a kilo for the unit, but you know, then you also need to print a couple of these things, so like. You know, round it up to you know 600 grams maybe you know 700 right. grams you know total you know with all the all the bits and bobs so yeah. less than less than 10 quid for yeah, yeah yeah and what's the what's the volume throughput on that you reckon it's like 80 cubic meters yeah, yeah, an hour roughly 80 cubic meters per hour per unit and the maximum power uh, these units are uh, uh, they become more efficient when they work at a lower speed and they become less efficient when they work at full power. But I would still expect about 75% efficiency at full throttle, uh, which, again, you know, it's a little bit of a kind of uh, overshoot. Uh, this should be enough to keep a room of about six, seven people uh, at uh, below 2000 ppm. Well, below CO2. 2000 ppm and CO2. Uh -huh. yeah, but, Probably you know, closer to about you know 1,200 you know ppm or so uh, you know from uh, what I've observed so far, and uh, we have Edinburgh High Club downstairs, 
uh, when we have you know, about 15, 20 people on open night and uh, you know, four of these units should be extremely efficient at all times uh, with uh, any load. And it's all open source? Will be. Will be. Because this, this all needs like G-code yeah, yeah, printing. This, this thing is... Like, there's not an SDL for yeah. this yet, this version. Um, well, we, we tried to do the STL. Uh, unfortunately, when you design it in uh, 3D design and then you try to paint it you know, uh, using standard slicers, uh, the, the slicers just fail and uh, they, they make a mess out of uh, the unit and you know, it takes uh, you know, like five, seven days to print. <laughs> uh, this unit at the moment prints in about uh, 40 hours. That's the large version. Yeah, that's the large version. You know, the unit that is behind you, a smaller one, yeah, suitable for about a couple of people. You know, this one prints uh, in uh, slightly less than uh, 16 hours, I believe. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah, with a bit of automation, you know, we'll be able to just you know, keep producing them. Mm -hmm. 500 a day, you know, 500 a year, you know, uh, for you know, every printer that we will have. Yeah.